Hey gang, it's your old buddy Platt back with another Spirit Series video. In this video we're going to talk about Irish whiskey. Uh, let's start off with what is Irish whiskey. Irish whiskey must be distilled in Ireland from a mash of malted cereal grains. Uh, it has to be fermented by yeast. Uh, it has to be distilled at no more than 94.8% alcohol by volume. But that right there kind of sets it apart from a lot of the other whiskeys we've been talking about, especially the American whiskeys that can't go any higher than 80% alcohol by volume or 160 proof. Uh, we, or Irish whiskey goes well past that. And with that being said, the, we talked about this a little in the Canadian whiskeys. Higher ABV you get, the lighter, little cleaner whiskey you'll get. Um, must be matured in wooden casks for at least three years, and those casks can be no larger than 700 liters. Uh, it doesn't say anything about new oak or charred oak or whatever, just wooden cask for three years. Um, and again, no lar larger than 700 liters. Um, bottle at no less than 40% alcohol by volume or 80 proof. Only thing that can be added to Irish whiskey is water or caramel coloring. Uh, we've seen that in previous whiskeys, and the Irish use the caramel, caramel coloring too, but nothing else. Uh, one thing that Irish whiskey does not have to be is triple distilled. That's kind of a misnomer out there, and we'll go over a little bit later why that is. Um, little history on Irish whiskey. Um, Distilling was brought to Ireland by the Irish monks that had gone to the Mediterranean on missions and they had picked up uh, distillation techniques on creating perfumes, essential oils, what have you. In the 11th century they brought back the equipment and the techniques to Ireland. Now somewhere along the way somebody decided to take, hey we've got some fermented green, why don't we throw it in this little still and see what happens. And the rest they say is history. Now the first variations or versions of Irish whiskey are not what we think of today. They probably weren't aged. Um, most likely it was an aqua vitae that had been flavored with herbs, spices, mint, what have you. Uh, today there's a product out there called Irish Mist. That's a liqueur that's kind of modeled after that or an homage to those original spirits. But obviously um, techniques it changed and we, we ended up again getting something closer to what we think of today as Irish whiskey. Uh, the, the first mention of whiskey in Ireland came in 1405 in something called the Annals of Clomacnays. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, the next big step in uh, Irish whiskey came in 1608 when King James I licensed the old Bushmill distilleries, uh, distillery. It uh, Lay's claim to be the oldest licensed distiller in the world. Now there's a little um, controversy on that. Kilbegan's distillery in Ireland lays claim to that too, saying that Bush Mills was not operating in trade till later or wasn't fully licensed. Uh, the claim's a little, it, it's a little vague on who who's first, but um, that is the, the claims that are made. Um, and a lot of people think it's the old bush mills, but what have you. Um, by the 1800s, Irish whiskey had become the most popular whiskey in the world and probably the most popular spirit in the world. Uh, and this was driven by pure pot still whiskey. That was the style of the day. Um, it was highly regarded, uh, known for quality, and it was highly sought after by the elites of the day throughout Europe and the world. Um, this ended up leading to a race to build not just more uh, distilleries but also larger distilleries and this kind of hit a peak when Middleton Distillery opened with a 31,000 gallon pot still. <laughs> Man, I would love that for Christmas. 31,000 gallons. Woo. Uh, the still today is not in operation, but I believe they have it outside the distillery for people to view, kind of a tourist attraction. Um, even though Irish whiskey was hitting its stride in the 1800s, the seeds for its demise had already been sown. 
Uh, first, oddly enough, it was a spirit uh, regulator for the government, a gentleman named Aeneas Coffee, that created some, something called the Coffee Still. And the big breakthrough there was that it allowed for continuous distillation. Also, his still was able to hit higher ABV, so we were able to distill more efficiently, hit higher ABV, which we know leads to again lighter, softer whiskeys, um, some say more approachable whiskeys. Uh, also, in the 1800s, there were other issues. Uh, Ireland had its own temperance movement. Uh, prohibition did not just hit America, but throughout the old British colonies, through various periods of time, the 1800s, early 1900s, there were some form of temperance movements, prohibition, hit those countries, and that came in the 1800s in Ireland. Also, if you know a little bit about Irish history, in the 1840s, there was the Great Famine, a large chunk of the population had died, another big chunk of the population had moved off after that, so again, their home market shrank quite a bit. Um, also, too, their competitors in Scotland, the Scotch people, who were way behind Ireland at the time, had kind of started working with blended whiskeys. And they were, again, softer, more, more uh, approachable to new drinkers. And the Irish whiskey makers just refused to kind of leave off their pot stilled, pure pot stilled whiskeys. And they ended up kind of falling behind the times. And it didn't take too long for the Scotch producers to become the number one whiskey on the planet. Um, only two of those old pure pot still style whiskeys remain today, Green Spot and Red Breast. Uh, there is a revival in Ireland to bring those styles back and there's new distilleries being built, but as far as the original um, pot still whiskeys, only those two survive today. Um, as far as styles of whiskeys, there's four types of uh, Irish whiskeys. There's single malt, single pot still, grain, and blended whiskeys. The Irish did finally come around on the blended whiskey thing, again, in a, in a way to keep up with the Scotch, and also the Canadians then started blending. And here in the U.S., you know, we even have our blended whiskey. So, uh, again, Ireland caught up uh, to the point where that's almost partially how they're identified today. Uh, the particular spirit we're going to try today is Tullamore Dew Irish Whiskey, 40% alcohol by volume, 80 proof. It is triple distilled and blended, just like the other big uh, Irish whiskey makers today, Jameson's, Bushmills, Powers. Um, and that is why today people, when they think Irish whiskey, they think triple distilled, blended, a softer, more manageable whiskey. But again, they still have these older styles like the pure pot still with red breast and green spot. Let's give her a try. Have a soft, I don't want to say vanilla, but caramel note, maybe. That's nice. It's definitely a lighter whiskey. Um, unlike its Scottish uh, brethren, um, there is no peat on these Irish whiskeys. A uh, nice little, very kind of soft caramel toffee sweetness but soft uh, you might not pick up in the camera but it's a fairly lighter colored whiskey um, again uh, with these Irish whiskeys you may notice that it's used a little different than let's say a bourbon or whatever you just don't see a ton of Jameson, Tullamore Dew, Irish whiskey old fashions, Manhattans, what have you um, this stuff tends to be drank with a lot of ginger ale, Sprite, um, and bomb drinks with Red Bull. Um, yeah, because it's a little, it's a little bit lighter. It's used in a little different sense in cocktail making than traditional kind of bigger whiskey. But overall, nice light uh, whiskey, real good. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below.
Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section, or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Till next time, bottoms up.